Greetings. What I have here today are two pens that are in many ways very, very similar to each other, but in a few other ways quite, quite different. So let's go through them. These are both pens that were introduced in the mid-1960s. Uh, we have here the Lamy 2000 and the Mont Blanc 220. The big, biggest difference here is that you could still go out and buy this pen today, brand new. Lamy's been making it continuously for over 50 years. This pen was discontinued um, back in the uh, back in the 70s. So uh, if you were to get one, you'd have to go to the vintage market and get one. Interestingly enough, the price you pay for a brand new Lamy uh, 2000, which is uh, thereabouts or about $175 or so, is about the same price if you shop carefully that you would expect to pay on the vintage market for a nice, clean working uh, Mont Blanc 220. So um, uh, they really are, in effect, uh, com still competing with each other even today. And uh, if you're thinking about getting a Lamy 2000, it's a fantastic pen, as we'll see. You might actually want to throw this in the mix of a pen you're considering, because it is a very, very similar uh, a pen and is definitely worth consideration. So we'll walk through the similarities, the differences, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, etc. And uh, we'll see where we where we get. Um, so as you can see, both pens are about the same size of each other. The uh, Lamy is a tiny bit girthier and a tiny bit longer. It also weighs uh, quite a bit more. It weighs 26 grams. The Mont Blanc 220 uh, only weighs 15 grams. When you hold them, uh, it doesn't really feel like that big a difference, but um, uh, they both feel like fairly light, thin pens, but there is that weight difference. They're both fairly traditionally sized pens. Here you can see, compare them to a uh, Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan, and as you can see, they're uh, all pretty much uh, right in the same ballpark with each, with each other. Um, both these pens are made from Macrolon, which is essentially a composite material that's fairly light. It has a texture, which is essentially a, um, a linear texture that runs the length of the pen and the cap. Um, it prevents it from showing fingerprints and small scratches, etc., and provides a nice grip, and it's got a really nice feel to it in both pens feel identical because they're both made of essentially the same the same material. Let's focus on uh, the Lamy 2000 first. It has no cap band. As you can see, it's flush. The top of the pen is just simply a plain black uh, uh, flat surface. The bottom of the barrel has a little inset uh, silver metallic uh, disc. Um, the, it's got a really nice clip, very, very sort of modern looking, uh, brushed steel clip. The only labeling on the whole pen actually is the word Lamy in tiny, tiny letters uh, on the side uh, of the clip, and it is a spring-loaded uh, clip. It's a pull cap. The pen posts obviously very nicely. It's really designed uh, to use posted, but you could, it is just about long enough to use unposted, but uh, I definitely do post this pen when I use it. Um, it's got a little sort of clutch ring with three little nubs here. Some people find those annoying uh, when you hold them. You can, if you really try hard, you can feel them. They don't bother me at all. It has an ink window, which is sort of um, several small little slits along the side here. It's a little little hard to see, but um, that is the ink window. It's okay as a functioning ink, ink window. Um, not not the most functional ink window in the world, but it, but it does work. Has sort of brushed steel that matches, that's brushed to ma match right into the macrolon. So this transition here, you cannot even feel at all, even you're going from two completely different materials. It has a partially um, hooded nib uh, that is a 14 karat gold uh, nib. And if you flip it over, you can see there's a hole on the bottom, which is where it draws ink up from. And this is a piston filler. The piston turning knob is right here. You cannot see it because it meshes completely uh, into the macrolon, completely seamlessly. It's so it's totally machined uh, in such a way that it's invisible. So if we were to turn this just a tiny bit, you can see the gap emerge. I'm not going to turn any further because I don't want to squirt ink out of the pen, but. You can see that's where the piston turning knob is located. So it's um, it is a um, piston filled pen. Um, let's contrast that a little bit with the Mont Blanc 220. Again, exact same Macron material, um, slightly thinner pen, but just slightly. Um, it does have a cap band, 
and on it it says Mont Blanc and 220 in very very tiny letters along the cap band. A clip is completely different. Um, let's we can compare the two clips with each other. This is probably the biggest outward difference is the clip. So you can see this is a gold tone clip. It is not a spring loaded clip, but it does clip well and it's sort of a, a tapered, um, very traditional looking uh, clip. Uh, if you are at any, at all brand conscious or label conscious, you're going to love this pen because not only do you get a Mont Blanc logo, you get two of them. You get one on the top of the cap and one on the end of the barrel. Um, obviously, it posts and posts well, very much like the uh, uh, Lamy feels almost identical in the hand. The location of the clutch ring is different on this pen. So this clutch ring, which is very much similar to what's on the <clears throat> on the Alami is much much further back in the pen than there's also an ink window directly behind the clutch ring. The ink window runs completely around the pen. It's a little more usable um, because it's a it's it's a thicker and uh, more pervasive clutch wind, uh, um, uh, ink window, if you will. <clears throat> From a comfort standpoint, if the little nibs on the uh, um, Lamy bother you. Uh, you might like the Mont Blanc better because the, it has the similar kind of nibs, but they're set much, much further back. Uh, highly unlikely you'd ever be holding the pen all the way up here. Um, it has a nice long section, obviously. Um, it's got a, what's sometimes referred to as a butterfly style uh, nib. <clears throat> um, not much uh, more of an inset nib than a hooded nib. Uh, and the only uh, markings on the nib are 585. Uh, which indicates the 14 karat gold content. This is a very different nib, obviously, than you used to seeing on any sort of modern um, Mont Blanc pens. Has a similar a hole to fill, but there's a very large hole um, on the bottom of the pen, as you can see, to uh, fill it. And like, just like the um, uh, Lamy, it is a piston filling pen. And again, you cannot see at all where the gap for the piston turning knob is. So I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to open this up a little bit. And again, I don't want to do too much because I don't want to squirt ink out the side of the pen. But there you can see uh, the piston, uh, the piston turning knob uh, where it is and how that sort of just literally disappears when you tighten it up against the pen. So that is both of these pens. I like them both. I really, really do. Uh, we're going to do a writing sample slash comparison now, but before we do that, I'm just going to, fair warning, the nibs are completely different. The um, Lamy is a medium and the Mont Blanc is an extra fine. So they're going to look and feel and write very, very, very differently. So let's just take that into consideration uh, when we do our, our writing sample. I like, obviously I like both these pens because I have both of them. Um, I personally think um, that uh, the Mont Blanc is worth seriously serious consideration for anyone who's uh, thinking about investing in a Lamy 2000. I'm not going to say this is a better pen and you should get this pen, but I think it's a little more interesting pen in that it's a vintage pen that is not made anymore. It's a little different than most other Mont Blancs. When people think of a Mont Blanc pen, they think of something like the, you know, the Meister Stucks, the um, the 144s, 146s, 149s, etc. This is obviously a completely different look for a Mont Blanc pen, one they have not made in many, many decades. So I think it just is, that adds to me just a, a, an interest and an appeal to it. Also, uh, what sometimes a deal breaker for people, like I said, on the um, on the Lamy 2000 is these little nubs in the location, and it does bother some people. And like I said, the location of those exact same uh, little nubs on the Mont Blanc is much further up in the pen. So if that's a deal breaker for you and you want a pen like this, this is definitely something uh, something to consider. Um, okay, let's see how they write. And we're going to do that right now. Okay, first up here is the Lamy 2000 which must have sounded like a very futuristic name back in 1966 when this pen was introduced, but now it's nearly 20 years ago. So there you go. Um, so uh, this is the Lamy 2000, and this has a 14 karat medium nib. Um, and, you know, this pen is sort of a renowned pen, and for good reason. It just writes terrifically. I mean, it's incredibly smooth, very, very reliable. Um, great, great, great uh, 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 pen. One thing I didn't mention that's actually a very appealing factor about this pen is when it's capped and just sitting laying around, 
it really looks like a two dollar disposable pen which is not necessarily a bad thing. If you're at all concerned about your pen getting swiped or getting stolen, and, and you know, depending on the environment you're, 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 you're in, that actually might be a desirable feature. This, is, this does not look like an expensive pen, especially when it's capped and just sitting around. It really, really looks uh, very much like a $2 disposable pen. So um, keep that, uh, that in mind as well. Uh, obviously the Mont Blanc uh, looks less so like a cheap disposable pen, mainly because it's got uh, the big Mont Blanc logo on it. So there is, there is that uh, big difference as well. So that is um, uh, this, this, you know, I don't really have much to say about, uh, you know, this pen writes just phenomenally well. This is a little bit on the broad side for a medium, but then again, it's a German made pen, which is pretty much what you expect. So it's uh, pretty much typical uh, German medium pen, extremely smooth, just, just uh, great. Um, if you're looking to get somebody a gift, that might be somewhat new to fountain pens and is somebody who you think is willing to take on sort of the extra burden of filling it from a bottle, etc., cetera, um, and cleaning the pen every once in a while and all that. Uh, this is a fantastic gift, this pen, because it is just, um, they will, you know, there, there's a huge reliability um, uh, uh, benefit of a pen like this. It caps well, it seals well, you could leave it capped for extended periods of time, you take the cap off, it writes great, really smooth, super smooth. Um, not, a, you know, it's not a flashy nib. It doesn't really even look like a, a fountain pen um, uh, at first glance. So um, it, um, you know, not flashy, unobtrusive pen. Um, you know, they sell an awful lot of these. This is a really popular pen and it's a popular pen for a good reason. And this is very often a pen that comes to mind when someone says, I want to get into a gold nib pen. What is a good first pen for a gold nib pen? And um, this pen is very, very often uh, mentioned uh, as, a, uh, as a good candidate for that. And I can't argue with that. It is a good candidate for a first gold nib pen for sure. So um, you will, you know, you're not going to go wrong with a pen like this. Um, now, let's look at the Mont Blanc, which is, I guess one would say a somewhat unorthodox choice if you're looking for a pen like pen of this type, but one which I think is worth giving serious um, consideration to. So this pen here is a Mont Blanc. 220 um, and this is an extra fine uh, uh, 14 karat nib and um, it's a again a German extra fine so this is more of a fine say uh, in, in say a Japanese nib um, um, so it's not a super super fine extra fine but it um, it, 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 it definitely is um, you know um, it's considerably finer than the Alami, as you can see, uh, the difference there. Um, so that's why I said this is not the most valid comparison in the world. It's not a completely hooded nib, but you do not really get much in the way of line variation uh, coming out of it. You can squeeze like a minute amount, but this is certainly not a soft nib or a flex pen. Uh, by any means, and I certainly wouldn't push this nib uh, at all because it's not it's not meant for that. It is just a great flowing, high performance, super reliable pen. And like I said, if you're thinking about buying the Lame 2000, I'm not telling you not to, but what I am telling you to do is think long and hard if maybe this pen uh, wouldn't be a good candidate uh, as well. Like I said, they can be obtained for nearly the same price. Of course, the Lamy 2000 you could just get anytime, any place you want, whereas this you will have to shop around and it might take a while before one comes on the vintage market that you can locate at the right price, etc. But they are available and um, they are just super, super great pens and not terribly uh, well-known uh, Mont Blanc pen. It's a little bit of a forgotten uh, Mont Blanc pen, I would say. And again, what you get, what you get for the you know reasonable price is you get this. You get it even in two places, which um, you know is worth something to uh, to some uh, to some people. So there there is that. So the unobtrusive nature that you have with the uh, with the Lama, you do not get with uh, with this pen. But like I said, great pen. Um, sort of a little bit on the wet side, 
um, but it's just a smooth, smooth writing pen. Both the nibs on both these pens are just among the, the smoothest, nicest, and most reliable um, that I have, and um, just great. Uh, these are two of these are t legitimately two of the most favorite pens uh, that I have. So either one you get, you would be happy with, or you could just do like I did and get both of them. So that is the pen. Let's talk a little bit about the ink. Okay, the ink I have in both these pens is the exact same ink. This is Waterman's Serenity Blue. Um, here's the thing with this ink. These are both piston-filled pens that uh, don't clean terribly easily. They're not really meant to be taken apart on a regular basis, etc. There is, if you do want to, if you do have either one of these and want to take them apart, Stephen Brown has a fantastic video where he shows in very good detail how to take apart both these pens. It's not super hard, but it's really not something that you want to do on a regular basis. So, um, so when we're talking about a vintage, we're talking about vintage pens, not cheap pens, etc. Um, that we just want to put a very, very safe ink in. And this by this is literally the poster child for a safe, safe ink. So um, this is Waterman Serenity Blue. It is about the absolute closest thing to a standard basic blue ink, although it is, you know, a very pretty, nice, very saturated blue ink. I mean, you know, this, I don't want to say this is, we're not talking about base state blue level of saturation here, but it's, it's, this is not a, um, a, a boring uh, shade of blue, but it is basic and it is safe and it, you can wash it out of your pen. You can safely put it in any pen that you would think of. Um, so this to me is a nice, safe choice for piston filled pens such as this that maybe are not the easiest uh, to uh, to clean uh, uh, in the world because with a piston filled pen if you're not taking it apart the only way to clean it is to fill it with water and flush and empty it fill it empty it fill it empty it fill it and empty it and if you're using an ink that is uh, not the best behaved ink in the world that could be an extraordinarily tedious process plus you could you do run the danger of staining the ink window so you want an ink uh, that's gonna wash out nice and clean and easily and this Waterman Serenity Blue uh, definitely fits the bill. This ink used to be called Florida Blue, uh, by the way. So if you see some old reviews or old bottles, uh, it's the same ink, but they changed the name um, a few uh, a few years ago. They changed the names of, I think, most of their basic color inks. They used to have a brown ink called Havana Brown. Now, now it's called Absolute Brown, etc. So they they definitely uh, mixed up the names, but the ink is the exact same ink. So um, that is this pen that is this ink um i don't have much more to say but this is again two of my favorite pens and a great uh ink uh to go uh to go with them i hope you found this video useful um if you did please please subscribe if you did not please let me know why and i will endeavor to improve and until next time, bye-bye.